guys, I am so thankful to be back here this weekend. Truly, it has been so wonderful for, for me to be back in New York to see your faces again. And I could not be more grateful that I get to share some of the things the Lord has been teaching me while I've been gone these past two years. Truly, each and every one of you, I am so thankful that I've been able to have um, such wonderful memories with you guys, of you guys teaching me. And now that um, I'll be able to share a little bit of something that the Lord has been working on me, and I pray that it impacts all of you the way that it has me. Um, so let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for this time that we get to be together. Um, a little bit of coffee and a few of our tr tea drinkers um, of just being able to um, bond over your word and reflect on its truth. And I pray that you would just allow us this morning to particularly be reminded um, of how our priorities need to reflect you um, and, and how we can even see that difference and that change in our lives. Um, I pray you would just be with us this morning. Open our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. So, I know all of you have heard a passage, if not three different sermons, um, about Luke 10, 38 through 42, which is Martha and Mary. Um, and I'm sure you've heard endlessly, you know, be like Mary and all these things. But what if I told you that deep down, you want to be like Martha? You know, you might get told that Mary is the best, but you really only hear that from a preacher on a Sunday or maybe a Wednesday night, you know, Bible study with the ladies. But deep down, you want to be like Martha because that's what the rest of the world tells you whenever anyone's not telling you to be like Martha Mary because, you know, we're told to be overproductive and get all these things done and be a super mom um, or to make the most out of your single life and just do everything you can. Um, and so often we're told that we should be a Martha um, because, you know, we have our Pinterest homes and all our DIY things and um, just having like a perfect little family that is Instagram worthy. And those are the kinds of things that are distracting us from Christ, just like Martha was distracted by some good things. You know, she let Jesus into her home, but then she was distracted by the work that needed to be done by having people in your home. Um, and oftentimes, honestly, ladies, if you're looking around at those people, those women that you idolize in your life, you might start to realize they're a lot more like Martha than they are Mary. Um... And we need to be able to see the difference because our culture tells us that we need to be extremely productive, um, that we need to make the most of our time and do all these things and, you know, listen to a podcast while you're making dinner for the kids and um, when the kids are napping, do this and this and this. And no, no, you don't need to do all those things. And you're not a super mom if you do all those things. Um, it's about sitting before the Lord. Let's look into that a little bit more and see how much our culture contrasts with the truth of this passage. Um, so if our desire is to be like a Mary, when it, biblically, but if our heart desires to be like Martha so often, um, ask yourself, do you really believe in the truth of this passage? Are you willing and are you sure <laughs> that you want to be able to make steps to have Christ as your number one priority. Um, and of course, we'd never probably outrightly say, no, I don't want Christ to be my number one priority. But ladies, being like a Martha is choosing to be distracted by other things instead of having Christ as our first priority. Um, so are you ready to figure out how to set aside those distractions and even to see what are the distractions in your life? Um, so I suggest, and I believe, that every Christian, every woman, every single lady out there, um, every mom, no matter how many kids you have, like Lonnie, <laughs> Joanna, that you can have the correct priority of Christ at your number one um, by following through these um, three steps. So first, open your home to Jesus. So verse 38, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, 
he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. So, score one for Martha, okay? She did do um, a very good thing here we see in this passage. She opened her home to Jesus. You know, that is step one. Um, letting Jesus into your life. Um, making the time for him and allowing people to come into your home. You know, sometimes the way Jesus wants to come into your life is by you having other people into your home and being willing to have people over, being willing to be hospitable. Um, obviously, I mean, right now, Joey and I'm in your home and I've been in almost all of your guys' homes. Um, and what a blessing that has been to me, especially when I was doing the BI here. I mean, I know you other BI girls, you guys can relate. It is beautiful to be able to be in someone's home and to watch and to learn with them. Um, just kind of seeing how you guys teach your children how you are with your husbands and being able to learn through that. And I am personally so thankful for my mother and the way that um, my parents allowed me to learn from them. They often, every time missionaries were on furlough, they were staying at our house. Um, have so many friends all across the world now because of that. And um, that truly opened my eyes to be able to realize that our house and our home, though it was a beautiful place for my family to be, it was also a place to be used by God to allow people to have a safe haven. Um, whether it was a stranger, whether it was the special, special speaker at church and having them over for lunch um, to be able to get to know them better, um, or just family, having family over and being able to make the home a, a sacred place to be able to let people in um, is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'm so thankful that I was able to see that um, in the example of my mom and that truly I see that in a lot of you guys. So step one, I think I think we're doing pretty good, um, I have to say, but um, let us be aware of that. And also I know that many of you are um, people who love to protect your home and your children. You have your best interest, you know, just, just looking out for them. And so, yeah, I also invite you to be aware and be cautious at times of who you do open your home to and knowing where the boundaries are for you guys personally. Um, or, you know, if there's a certain stage in your life where your kids are at an age that certain strangers, it wouldn't be okay to let into your home. Um, and so it's okay to have those kinds of thoughts. Uh, but I think it's valuable to understand that we need to be open to the opportunities that Christ has before us. And he will guide us in those opportunities that we need to say yes to and the ones that we need to say no to. Um, so first, open your home to Jesus. Um, step two, and I think this one's the hardest, um, give your attention to Jesus. So I'm going to read verses 39 and 40. Um, she, and she had a sister named called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and was listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, why don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her, help me. And how many times has that thought gone through your guys' heads as you've been preparing for company or a group that's staying over? You're just like, who's going to help me? Like, this is so much work to be done and there's so much to be preparations to be made and I think that's a logical thought that we all think of just like Martha was thinking okay Jesus is in my home now but now there's food to be made because they're staying here and I want to be able to feed him and I guess he was with his disciples at the time he maybe still was um going into her home and so there's people to feed and um dishes to clean and all those sorts of things that in are just happen naturally when you are open your home to someone and are someone who is hospitable. There's just responsibilities that go along with that. Um, but the difference is that Martha was distracted by those things. And Mary chose, okay, Jesus is here. I'm going to sit and listen and be attentive um, to the things that he's saying. And, you know, so often we can be at fault by letting people into our homes, but then we miss out on all the chance of being able to love on them or to learn from them um, because we're thinking about the dishes that are piling up or um, the meal that needs to get out of the oven. And obviously there are some things that just still have to happen <laughs> when there's people over, but are you being distracted by them so that you're missing out on the good portion um, that Mary was partaking in? 
And so think about this. Mary was sitting only, just sitting on Jesus' Jesus's feet. She wasn't washing the floor while she was going at it. Like she was just sitting and listening. Therefore, no multitasking. I know you guys, all right? You guys, some of you, not all of you, but some of you are really great multitaskers. Um, but that's not what you need to be when there's people in your home or when you're sitting before Jesus learning or teaching. It's not a time to multitask, particularly, again, with your quiet time, your devotions. Um, it's not a time to multitask. Um, I think so often I see, you know, different Instagram pictures where it's, you know, all the kids look perfect and, you know, ridiculous <laughs> and, or the house is just gorgeous and all these things. And so it's so easy in our, in our social media world to be seeing all these pictures of perfection and get so easily distracted, um, while we're doing things and just think, okay, I gotta get going, I gotta get going, I need to multitask, multitask. And, um, there's been a couple of podcasts um, that I've been listening to that have shed some light on this because if you think about all the books that are selling right now, the podcasts, all those things, so many of them are telling you, this is how you prioritize your time. This is how you make the best of your time. This is how you be super productive. This is how you do all these da, 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 da. time. It's all about just going, 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 doing, doing, doing all these tasks. Um, it's not about sitting and resting almost ever. Um, that's what our culture is telling us, and oftentimes even our Christian culture. And there's a really good podcast by Jefferson Beth Key. Um, I can hook you guys up with that later, but um, I just want to just share a little bit of what he was talking about. So he mentioned how um, humans are not meant to be productive. I know that might sound kind of crazy when it first comes out, but think about it. Like, we're messy, we're sinful, we're slow. Some of us are slower than others. Um, we're full of mistakes. And we need sleep. I mean, we need eight hours of sleep. You know, robots and machines, they are productive. They do exactly what they're supposed to do, exactly how they're supposed to do it, and they get it done. And they could do it for 24-7 if they had the power and, and, and fuel or whatever that they needed. That's not how we're created. We we do a little and then we need rest and we need pauses and there's learning curves. Um, by the definition of productivity, that's not humans. Um, it's not who we are. And, you know, there's a lot of hard workers out there, absolutely. But if you think about the definition of productivity, it's not really how we were created to be. Um, and he sheds light in his podcast on the Industrial Revolution and his opinion of how that has impacted the family and the church and really, you know, a, a business model of, you know, indiv individualizing jobs and the assembly line and how to do that has carried into so many areas of our life of individual individuality and being super productive and getting all these things done. And so just, I'll have you guys check out that podcast later, but truly, what are we giving our attention to? Is it just all these lists and tasks and being able to be the most efficient that we can throughout the day? Or are we being, are we willing to just sit and listen and pause before Jesus without other things running through our brain? It's difficult. It truly is. Um, so first we got to be open to letting Jesus in and the people into our lives that he desires for us to um, learn from and to teach and to disciple. And secondly, um, giving your attention to Jesus. Let him be the focus. He is the one we should have set before. So thirdly, finding your joy in Jesus. So verse 41 and 42, um, the Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you're worried and upset about many things. But only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Um, wow. Wow. It's easy to think that the good things are things like having a clean house and a wonderful meal and perfect pictures for your Instagram. It's easy to think that that's the ideal, but it's not. The good portion that Mary had chosen was sitting and resting before the Lord. And that's very counterculture to what what our world is telling us is a good thing. It's not rest. It's 
do as much as you can with the time that you have. Um, and so I just think, you know, what occupies your mind during the day, during Jesus time, you know, what are you thinking about? And I just have to say, like, I don't know if there's any other ladies out there, but during your Jesus time, are you thinking about, you know, the thankfulness um, that you can have in the Lord and being able to find your joy in those things and, you know, just truly giving your all, all your thoughts to that moment? Or is your mind racing and you start praying, Lord, you know, thank you so much for Kalia and Kalea and just how much you're teaching them. Please give me patience. And oh, I have to remember, and they need to go to the dentist. I think that's, is that in October? Oh, or was that November 11th? Oh, I don't remember. Oh, oh, and you know what? When I go, I should make sure that I go to Walmart because we need to pick up that thing for that fall party. Oh, I should write that on my phone or I'm going to miss it. And, and we're gone. Like, seriously, ladies, is that not the way we work? Especially the female brain. Oh, my word. We can bounce all over the place sometimes. And for me, particularly, that happens a lot during prayer if I'm not focused um, it's so vital and so difficult. Um, so difficult. You know, where is your, your attention for step two, you know, where your attention is, is, is going to be what you're trying to find your joy in as well. We have to focus at that time with the Lord. And, you know, there's that joy you can find in productivity that can be so deceiving. Um, cause seriously, how amazing is it? Am I right? I think Joanna can relate with this and probably, um, Janine as well. To be able to have a list and you just check it off throughout the day. Like when everything on your to-do list is just check, 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 check. Like glorious bliss. Am I right? Like that, that brings me some joy. But there's a huge difference on that temporal joy of tasks that come back every single day versus the solid, um, good portion, eternal joy that comes from sitting before the Lord, learning with Him, and being willing to focus on him. When we're doing steps one and two, when we're opening up our home to Jesus, when we have our attention on Jesus, then he is the focus. He's the center. And when we're able to do that, then we can find our joy in him and not the tasks that we have to accomplish or trying to be some super mom. Um, when your heart is on Jesus and others, the people he's let into your life, the worries aren't going to bombard you. The focus is not going to be on you. Um, I think of Leilani. She shared a, and those of you who don't know Leilani, she um, lived here a couple years ago, and right now her and her husband and their six children are missionaries over in Portugal with Word of Life, and she used to tell me, um, that whenever she was feeling, like, in a pity party and that she just felt so sad for herself, all these things, you know, she could list them off, whatever, that the solution was not solving those things or making her frustrated or sad about herself or, you know, a pumpkin spice latte or just indulgence. None of those things were the answer. The answer was just to stop thinking about herself. To go find someone that she could love on and love on them. Do an act of kindness for someone that needs it. And as soon as she was in that act of serving and loving someone else, pretty soon her pity party was gone. And because she wasn't focusing on herself. So when we focus on Jesus, we can have that true joy of realizing it's not about us. It's not about us. So again, I believe every single one of us, we can have Christ as our top priority when we follow those steps of letting Jesus, letting the people into our home that he wants us to impact, let them into your life, be willing to be vulnerable, and then give them your attention. Sit before the Lord without multitasking. Sit with people, your friends, your disciples, your mentors, without multitasking and just learn from them and then day in and day out as you do those things let Christ become your true and total joy it is a beautiful thing beautiful thing and I'm totally still learning it as you guys all know um but I just realized guys it's not about what our culture tells us is important you know productivity is not all what it's cut out to be it's about sitting with the Lord and being willing to spend time with Him. So, I would encourage you, as you do that, um, shut off your phone during quiet time. You don't need it. There's a really cool thing. I don't know if any of you guys have the new iOS 12 update with the screen time. Um, 
settings that you can have, but you can adjust exactly how much time you um, are able to be on your phone or on certain apps and things like that. So when quiet time is up, like have it not be a time when your phone can be active um, or just turn it off completely, whatever works for you. Also train your brain um, to accept silence, to be okay with that. Um, it can be difficult sometimes. I have this great devotional. I'll show you guys the book later um, that was recommended to me. And it starts and opens with two minutes of silence, which doesn't sound like much, but it's a lot when you have a brain like mine that just wants to go and go and go. Two minutes of silence before the Lord. Listening, preparing, not necessarily praying, just silence before the Lord. I'm allowing your heart to be open and be ready um, as you as you go through that devotional and then ending again with two minutes of silence. It's really challenging and really great. Um, and then also guys, ask yourself these questions as we wrap up, just think, who is God putting in your life that you need to welcome in? And also with that, are there things in your life that you need to say no to? Because honestly, I know a lot of us struggle with doing too much. And some of the seasons that you guys are in means that you might need to back off a little bit of responsibilities and the people that you are constantly serving so that you can have time to sit before your number one priority, Jesus, and allowing him to decide what those next priorities are for you and for your family at this time. And for others of you, it's going to be more the first one. You need to start with asking the Lord, who is it that you need to be welcoming in and um, seeing how he wants to use you in the lives of people and maybe some of you just need to start with letting Jesus in just letting Jesus in and being vulnerable with your faith and allowing that those questions to come out walk walk it out with the Lord talk it out with the Lord um and feel free to ask me about it as well and um it's challenging guys but I am really encouraged by all of you guys and the ways that I know the Lord will has challenged you um, in these areas and what he will continue to do. So let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for this time that we have. And um, I pray that you would just continue to work on each one of us as we think about how to make you the number one priority in our life and that we can get rid of the distractions in our life. Brother in your son's name, amen. So let's split up. Let's grab some more coffee and um, let's talk about some of these things that you guys find are the most distracting in your life and maybe some new opportunities that you think the Lord is giving you.